We have all done it. You're coming into the corner. You're feeling poised. You're ready. You're like Lloyd Bruni. And you come in, you break hard, you break late. Because of course you do. You're flipping Lloyd Bruni. Except, well, oh, before it. Uh, even the masters get it wrong sometimes. And you just know in that situation that you're supposed to ease off the braking pressure, let the front wheel roll, steer it around the corner. You also know you're not going to do that. You're going to freak out. You're going to panic. You're going to pull on harder. You're going to lock the front. You're going to lose it. You're going to go straight on. And it's just right up. Yep. I mean, that's kind of the best outcome in that situation. No big crash, saved it, no big deal, but he ain't setting a personal best in that run. No one wants to be scanning for ticks every time their trigger finger gets a bit too happy on the way into the turn. This is a problem that used to exist in cars until about midway through last century, a revolutionary invention was introduced called the anti-lock braking system. This system allowed for hard panic braking but it kept those wheels rotating to allow that panic driver to wow. steer around whatever had spiked their cortisol. Car ABS systems are so good now that professional drivers can't actually beat them. And that's evidenced in Overdrive's YouTube video on the subject. No! Oh! <laughs> Locked up a little bit. But it wasn't until ABS was introduced to motorbikes that we saw a massive reduction in fatalities by about a third. And the reason for that is that bikes they just want to fall over. It's not their fault. They're just inherently unstable. And the solution to that instability is steering. And you can only steer if that front wheel is rotating. Fortnite put out an excellent video on how those systems work. And it's incredible to see just how well they perform when the shit hits the fan. These ABS systems transitioned from road motorbikes into off-road motorbikes. And many people were like, that can't work. There's too many variables. The terrain's so different. The conditions can be so different. It just can't be a person. But then people have demonstrated that with ABS, they can stop more consistently and stop quicker, especially when the terrain is unpredictable. And now we have those systems on mountain bikes. Well, electric ones anyway, it's the convenient battery source. And they've been on the market for a few years and Rob Ride's e-mountain bike YouTube channel did an excellent video demonstrating how good they are. But with race focused systems now on the market, my interest has been piqued. Let's see if it works. If what I've said is right, I should be able to come in hot. Land deep, woo, break late. Woo! <laughs> that seems to work. Cool, right. Let's go inside and see if I can explain how it does that. Before we dive into the juice, disclaimer, this video was supported by Bosch and they provided the system I have been sampling free of charge. So first of all, quick recap on hydraulic brakes. The brake lever is connected to a master cylinder filled with brake oil. When the lever is pulled, a mechanism pushes oil out the cylinder through the brake hose and into the brake caliper. The brake caliper has pistons that graciously move out of the way of that incoming incompressible fluid, which in turn drive the brake pads into a durable steel braking rotor that is attached to the spinning wheel with such crushing force that the wheel is encouraged to stop. But as we've hopefully learned, sometimes we don't want it to stop. So let's insert a clever little ABS system into that mix that measures the front and rear wheels rotational speed via tone wheels attached to the rotors and a nifty sensor that detects when each square passes by. 
the signals from these sensors then pass to the main control unit, which is attached to the suspension, lower legs, and intersects the front brake hose. The brake fluid has a clear path from the master cylinder on the bars down through the system into the caliper. So when the system is turned off, the brake functions like a normal hydraulic disc brake. Because you definitely do not want the brakes to run out of batteries. <laughs> When the wheel's speed sensors detect that the front wheel is either rotating slower than the rear or decelerating suddenly, it will engage the ABS system. There are three main parts to the system. There's a pressure sensor to give feedback on the adjustments the system makes, a pressure release valve to reduce braking pressure, and a pressure increase valve to increase the braking pressure. The system moves in an orchestrated dance with the speed sensor detecting a front wheel skid. The pressure release valve decreases braking pressure. The wheel turns. Pressure increase valve adds pressure back in. Control is returned to the rider. No more skidding. Job done. More skidding. <gasps> release pressure. Wheel turns. Increase pressure. Return control. Skid. Release. Turn. Add. Return. Skid. Release. Turn. Add. Return. Still skidding. Well. Now you've run out of system capacity, you weapon, you're on your own. A system like the one I have here is designed for that initial grab of brakes where the grip levels can change from turn to turn. It's supposed to allow you to get on the brakes hard and if you overcook it, save a slip out and smoothly return control to the rider before resetting for the next braking event. So that is how they work, but do they work? Quick reminder, I am here to educate and spend way too much time editing this video, not review products. A review paid for by the manufacturer is not worth your time. But what I do have for you is the answer to the question that most people have. Yes, it is true. When it comes to emergency stops, it is possible to beat the system. This makes sense as maximum stopping power often comes with a portion of wheel slip, which this system does not currently allow. However, the ability to hold a braking event at the very edge of traction, especially in variable conditions, is so incredibly difficult that most riders will never be able to reliably dance on that edge, let alone get close to it. The fact that some riders have not beaten the system when testing is evidence of that fact, and it shows that the level of anti-lock support varies depending on rider skill terrain and conditions. So, are ABS systems going to make normal brakes a relic of the past? Time will tell on that front. Currently, there are some noted performance benefits and you cannot deny the increase in safety too. I'd liken today's e-mountain bike ABS systems to installing tire inserts or drivetrain dampers. It's not essential but it does solve a specific problem. I'm going to keep experimenting with my system, try and get the most out of it, and start planning the next video. Thank you, and good night. Barry, I'm sorry. He made me do it. The camera made me do it. Break away! What? Fuck it. You went so fast. I went too far. <laughs>